welcome, welcome. This is Dave Rogers with Meet the Author series. And I have Professor Rowe today from India. It's a great opportunity to have you on the show, Professor. How are you today? Uh, thanks for having me uh, for this interview. Especially, I have come out of my brainstorm uh, world of your back. And uh, I am grateful to you for giving this opportunity. Uh, despite having lots of schedules and uh, commitments, uh, you have agreed to interview me. I'm, I'm honored to have this interview. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us for International Men's Day. Your sharing was very inspiring. Your story of resilience and continued growth is something that I'm really happy to be able to share with more people. I'd love you to share a little bit about your latest book and why did you write the book? Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a book titled uh, See the Right in You, uh, for which the Nobel laureate, His Holiness Dalai has written a foreword. Uh, I have authored more than uh, 50 books, including the award winning book titled See the Right in You, for which uh, the Nobel laureate has written a foreword. So I'm grateful to uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama uh, for uh, writing a foreword for my book. And uh, why I wrote this book is that because uh, in India, uh, when I was uh, uh, conducting some training programs uh, in, and also uh, when I was conducting classes for uh, various students uh, in colleges, uh, some suicides were happening in, in India because of pressure and various other uh, reasons. Then I thought uh, of uh, writing a book uh, about uh, these uh, suicides. Then I started uh, writing about various aspects like uh, mindfulness, wellness, divorces. Uh, so all those things I have uh, written and I have made a book, I have created a book. And uh, then I requested uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama to write a foreword. And uh, he agreed to write a foreword and uh, he appreciated my book. And then he has written a foreword for my book. So this is how the journey with uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama. And uh, the uh, apart from this, you know, uh, this uh, this book I have written before the pandemic. Uh, so after uh, uh, pandemic, uh, things uh, have come. S s things have changed, and there is more focus on this wellness and. Uh, uh, when, uh, mindfulness. So the importance of book is uh, more important than what it was, especially at the post-pandemic uh, scenario. So this book so is very much uh, required. Not uh, uh, yeah, I'll I'll show you. Yeah, this is the book. Okay. This Thank you book. so much. Let me let me just this recap. Book? Let me recap for yeah. our listeners today. Yeah. The professor Rao he wrote this book, and Dalai Lama. He asked Dalai Lama to write the foreword. So to some of our new authors, I'm inviting you to think about who would you love to maybe write the foreword or maybe get a testimonial. And it's one of the ways that an author can really magnify the message. And it's not about getting sad if they say no, because sometimes they say yes. And this is an example of Professor Rowe reaching out to Dalai Lama and actually getting Dalai Lama to do the foreword for his book. So be inspired by this man's courage, his bravery, and his willingness to ask. And so often, if you ask, things can happen that might seem like miracles. And I guess, Dr. Rowe, would you share a little bit about your uh, misfortunes with health and wellness and the way that you've kept the focus on healing and getting yourself in a position to still be very positive about life? Yeah, it, it was a very strange journey in my life, unexpected. Uh, I, I, actually, I'm basically a Indian Air Force veteran. Uh, uh, after when I was 18, I joined Indian Air Force. Uh, then I acquired a couple of qualifications. Uh, then uh, I served in the Indian Air Force and I acquired healthy habits. Uh, and uh, uh, despite having healthy habits and despite having a strict uh, routine, uh, it was uh, it was uh, my misfortune that you know I had uh, brain stroke uh, in the year 2021, and uh, I survived because of my positive psychology and because of the healthy habits that I acquired from Indian Air Force. 
and because of the power of subconscious mind. I have mental challenges, physical challenges, and financial challenges. I have ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I am dyslexic. And add to that, the brain stroke has further ruined my health. But despite all the challenges, I am not uh, giving up. I was born in a toxic family and uh, I, I was. Uh, I, I grew up in a toxic environment. There's lots of uh, challenges I have encountered. I'm 15 years old. It's, it's innumerable challenges, but I'm not giving up. Precisely, I rose like a phoenix of the brainstorm. So uh, the message from everyone is that, you know, everything is possible in this world. So, uh, so be prepared for challenges and understand that, uh, that life is present. Especially things have changed so drastically after the uh, pandemic. So pandemic has taught several lessons. The One of the uh, lessons from a pandemic is that life is very frizzle, life is very short. So what we should do is you must utilize your time in such a way that uh, you can utilize your, you can, uh, you can uh, utilize your time in such a way that you can add value to others and make a difference in the lives of others. So this is the message I would like to share with everyone. Uh, remember that life is very short. Life is not a cakewalk. And be optimistic and be resilient. Never ever give up. So let me let me recap again, uh, uh, Professor Shah, uh, Rao. It's important right now for our listeners to experience what Professor Rao has gone through. He is dyslexic. He had a toxic environment. He has experienced <clears throat> um, this uh, ADD, attention deficit disorder. He had a brain stroke. Half of his body was in paralysis. And mm -hmm. yet he continues to move on. Yet mm -hmm. he continues to look to learn. Yet he continues to pay it forward to help other people. Some mm -hmm. of you might be finding right now, hearing clearly what Professor Rowe is saying, or maybe there's some static in my voice. And maybe you're going to give up listening. Yet maybe you, what you'll do is, you rewind and listen even more carefully. Listen even more with an open heart. Listen even more for ideas that could give you an uplift, give you a invitation to overcome challenges and bring in curiosity, bring in writing, bring in becoming a messenger for hope. Because when I've met Professor Rowe, I often am hearing somebody who wants to make a difference. And I would like you to also share, Professor, what are one or two tips for people that are thinking about becoming an author? What was your way of writing a book, writing an article, and actually using writing as a way to communicate and to heal? So I think uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, talk one by one. So let me know what the what the first question. We'll go one by one. The first question is: first, What is what is a tip that you have for an aspiring author? Okay, the the thing is, uh, the yeah, first point is that be passionate about uh, what you are doing. It. I'm passionate about uh, writing. Right from my childhood, I'm passionate about learning. And I am passionate about uh, writing. And when I was in the child, I didn't know. Uh, I was writing on my, when there was no uh, paper, I used to write on my body. I was not understanding something was wrong with my mind and why I was writing. Even when there was no paper, so what I was doing, I used to write on my body. So then I, subsequently, I thought that maybe. I discovered that I was passionate about writing. Although there was no paper, I, I only had pen. What I used to, I, I wanted to write even on the body. So I thought that it was a disease. It was not a disease. It was my passion. So I discovered that I had passion for writing. So this I came to know later. But initially I thought that it was it's a kind of disease I had. So from this, it's very obvious that I am passionate about uh, uh, writing. Okay, so this passion was there, and I used to uh, jot down by way of uh, uh, notes. I had a diary, uh, journal, uh, very long pen. 
uh, I used to write di diary every day. Uh, at that time, there was no internet. So I used to write and I used to go to far distant places, to libraries, to acquire knowledge. And I was bo born in a poor family with lots of challenges. But uh, despite uh, that, I used to go by bicycle. I used to go by bicycle very long distance. So I, I used to go to libraries and I used to learn. And whatever was there, I was writing. So uh, I was uh, making a notes. That's how I okay. started. Uh, and, so uh, let, let, so, let, me re uh, let me recap your point because I think yeah. this is so valuable for our yeah. listeners to hear. So Professor Rowe loved to write. He's passionate about writing. Even when he didn't have paper, he would look for ways to write. He is a seeker of knowledge, and then he wants to share that knowledge. So he's yeah. developed a strategy to be able to write, express, to learn, mm -hmm to rewrite and to share. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. if you don't, if any of our listeners do not like to write, maybe they like to dance or maybe they like to sing or maybe they like to, to sketch, we're inviting you to find ways that you can explore ways that other people are doing it. So if you love to sing, go study singing or go study music or go be a, a team player for a band. It's an opportunity for you to be in, in an environment. And what Professor Rowe has also shared is he had to change his environment. His family was toxic. His family environment used to pull him down. So he had to go out to other environments to find people who would inspire him, people that would engage him. And so if you're finding that your environment right now is not supportive and you love to sketch or doodle, maybe you go to an art class. Maybe you go to a, uh, a library. Maybe you go find a new environment that allows you to also grow. So that is fantastic feedback, Professor Rowe. Thank you so very much. Now, I've got a question about if we could find somebody that you would like to get your book, maybe a famous person, who would you love us to love to read your book? Uh, anyone in the world, like you've already reached out to Dalai Lama, is there somebody in the world that you, if you had a magic wand and they could have your book, who would it be? Oh, the one who is the, uh, yeah, naturally, the one who is living personally can write a foreword. Am I right? No, I would like to know. Right now you have that book. And so it's, it's like one of these questions. It's who would you like to get a copy of this book and read this book? Anyone in the world, if anyone could read the book that you would like, who would it be? I mean, the someone who can write forward, like Dalai Lama. I'm not clear I'm, about the question. Uh, okay, the question again, I'll try asking the question. Your book, uh, if we uh, could get it into somebody's hands in the world uh, that would make uh, you very happy, who uh, would it be that you could give the book to? No, I, actually, I wanted to give it to His Holiness Dalai Lama. So what I, what really happened, you know, I I forgot to tell you because I think you asked a, a very interesting question. Uh, I I wanted to hand over uh, uh, a copy of uh, this book to His Holiness Dalai Lama. Then the pandemic started. Uh, then uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama told that the uh, the pandemic started, uh, COVID uh, cases were rising, so. Uh, we will see later. That's what uh, said by his always Dalai Lama. That was okay. the reason. Actually, otherwise I would have gone physically and given, uh, gifted the copy to his always Dalai Lama. That was okay. the reason. And okay. things have so, changed totally after the scenario. That is the problem. And the, thank you for asking this question. And also let me share with that his always Dalai Lama. He lives in uh, India. I also live in India. I, I I thought that I, I, I'll i be blessed to have, uh, I would have given a copy of to His Holiness Dalai Lama, but it was not possible because of the pandemic. I hope I am clear with what I said. Well, what I will what share with our listeners and to you. So when Professor Rowe reached out to get a forward from Dalai Lama and received it, that's amazing. His goal is to actually hand a copy to Dalai Lama. Yeah. Yeah. And when... Our listeners today, when you're writing your book, imagine you giving this book to somebody that you would love to have it. Maybe you want uh, 
Oprah to have it. Maybe you would love to give it to uh, Justin Bieber. Maybe you would love to give it to uh, the. Uh, no, actually, I I I requested uh, Barack Obama to write a foreword for one of the books, but he, he didn't agree. If I had any opportunity, I would have given to uh, the American president Barack Obama. Very good. So that's another name, Barack Obama. Yeah. So this is yeah. what's nice is when you start to think because again, if Professor Rhodes happens to go to America and he mm. happens to be invited to a gala with Barack Obama. He will mm. bring the book to give to Barack Obama, and yeah. that will allow him to actually elevate as a, opposed to just a regular guest, he becomes an authority. He becomes an mm. authority in mindfulness. When you mm. write a book, you become an authority in a topic, and that's one of the reasons why I do encourage people to write a book, work on a book, be part of expressing <laughs> your dreams, your passions, your your healing techniques, and that allows you to shift from being a normal person to being an authority in a certain area. That authority can assist you in growing your business and having a fuller life. So I thank you very much, Professor Rowe. That's wonderful. I would love to ask you, uh, share with people on the ways that they can contact you and the way that they can get a copy of your book, please. Okay, that I would tell, but uh, I I wanted to, I requested even Barack Obama to write a foreword for one of the books because whenever I write a book, uh, I approach the uh, right person to write a foreword. For this mindfulness, I requested uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama because this book is about mindfulness. So I wanted to write a book on strategy and leadership to Barack Obama, but I, I didn't get uh, the opportunity to have the foreword written by Barack Obama. So for every book, you know, I have some vision. Okay, for this book, this person is the apt to write a foreword. So like that, you know, I keep uh, requesting the people. And also Barack, Barack Obama, I, I, I admire him because he also rose from uh, the ranks. He, 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 he rose from uh, humble origins, the way I also rose. Uh, rose in my life and I, I was born in a toxic family so so many challenges despite all the challenges and I have grown so similarly uh, uh, in in another way I can say that Barack Obama is also an inspiration but basically Abraham Lincoln has been my inspiration since my childhood okay now coming to your point where I can be reached is uh, uh, the book is very this the book on uh, mindfulness is very close to my heart. This book is available on all the uh, online stores. Uh, I got lot, lot, lots of uh, reviews. Uh, it's not only because of uh, the, he, his holiness, the Lama, but also the, the book is very strong because the content is very strong. Okay, so the book is available on uh, online stores, especially on Amazon can purchase a copy of this book. And also, my books are available on various uh, online stores on Amazon. And you, you can also reach me out through four blogs. I have four blogs. And I have two YouTube channels. I'm passionate about uh, sharing my knowledge freely with the world. So that's what I would like to say. That because passion is the one thing that has brought me to, to come up to this level despite uh, born in a toxic family, despite growing in a uh, toxic environment, despite uh, what that called, disp uh, I was not blessed with regular education because I was a college drop. Because of the continuous learning, passion, all those things helped me to come up to this level despite having challenges. So, what I would uh, say to everyone is that never ever give up. And uh, uh, the message from this uh, uh, book is that health first, education second, and wealth is all. Thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank with you very gratitude. much, Professor Rowe. Namaste. Gratitude. Much Namaste. gratitude. And thank you so very much. Namaste.